It's November 2015, and this is Wow Signal Burst number nine. Nick Nielsen with Halos of Vanished Civilizations. Hello, this is Nick Nielsen for Wow Signal Bursts. Today I will be talking about what I call the halos of vanished civilizations. But first I will start with a short sketch of the problem of the age of extraterrestrial civilizations. It has become a commonplace of contemporary thought that if there are other civilizations in our universe, these civilizations are likely very old, millions of years old or even billions of years old. Carl Sagan often wrote of million-year-old civilizations in the cosmos, and Ray P. Norris wrote a paper titled How Old is E.T., in which he explicitly argued that any extraterrestrial civilization we might discover through SETI would be millions or billions of years old. Norris concluded his paper, quote, Conventional models imply that supernovae and gamma-ray bursters will extinguish life on planets at intervals of about 200 million years. Since this has not happened on Earth, either these conventional models are wrong, or else life on Earth is probably unique in the galaxy. The first case predicts a median age of E.T. as being of the order of one billion years. The second case predicts that we will never detect E.T. Thus, if we detect E.T., the median age of, is of order one billion years. Note that in this case, the probability of E.T. being less than one million years older than us is less than one part in 1,000. Therefore, any successful SETI detection will have detected a civilization almost certainly at least a million years older than ours and more probably of an order of billion years older, unquote. This estimate may have to be revised, however. Recent research published on a particular kind of gamma-ray burst, the long-duration gamma-ray burst, or LGRB, published in the paper The Relative Rate of LGRB Formation as a Function of Metallicity, by J.F. Graham and A.S. Fruchter, suggests that, as the authors put it, LGRBs, quote, are preferentially formed in low-metallicity environments, unquote, which implies that, as the universe ages and metallicity gradually increases through stellar nucleosynthesis and supernovae, LGRBs decrease in frequency. This, in turn, implies that as LGRBs decline over time with the rise of metallicity, fewer sterilization events occur in the history of the universe, thus shifting the likelihood of life and its expansion through the universe to later in the history of the universe. In other words, the conditions for life and for civilization may improve as the universe ages, which may require a recalculation of the assumptions made in Ray Norris's paper on the longevity of E.T. Of course, the astrophysics of the early universe is an area of active scientific research, and other recent Discoveries are also relevant here, such as the early chemical enrichment of the universe through supernovae, but I will not go further into these interesting fields of research at the present time. Perhaps as a countervailing influence to the commonplace of million-year-old super-civilizations inhabiting the cosmos, such civilizations being part of an encyclopedia galactica to which we, too, will be able to gain access once we have the technology to join the galactic club of advanced civilizations, is the equally commonplace idea that advanced civilizations destroy themselves not long after having attained technolo technological maturity, which gives them the technological wherewithal to destroy themselves. This also was an idea that Carl Sagan mentioned on many occasions, which seems to prove the famous line from F. Scott Fitzgerald that the test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. The idea of self-destructive self -destructive advanced civilizations has been given an interesting twist in a recent paper by Adam Stevens, Duncan Forgham, and Jack O'Malley James titled observational signatures of self-destructive civilizations, which seeks to take up the last term of the Drake equation, L, or the longevity of technical civilizations, by specifically looking for signatures of civilizations that have destroyed themselves. What kind of traces would vanished industrial, civil, industrial technological civilizations leave in the universe? I find this to be a very innovative approach to the question of seeking signatures for ETI. The authors of this paper consider four scenarios that could result 
in the complete extinction of an advanced civilization. One, complete nuclear mutually assured destruction. Two, a biological or chemical agent designed to kill only the intelligent species or all multicellular species in a given biosphere. All eukaryotes or all living things without exception. Three, a technological disaster such as the Grey Goo scenario. Or three, four, an excessive pollution of the star, planet, or interplanetary environment. Taking up each of these scenarios in turn, the authors inquire as to how gamma ray detection, transit spectroscopy, photometry, asteroseismology, stellar abundance studies, and disk debris imaging could reveal signatures of these civilization ending events. In addition to traces of destructive events noted in this paper, the end of an advanced technical civilization would leave other relics, and one of these relics would be the particular structure of the electromagnetic signals generated by the civilization, which would begin with those signals most easily produced by earlier radio technologies, move on to signals of greater complexity and sophistication, and then the signals would cease. I have called such structures of EM signatures the halos of vanished civilizations, and it is possible that if technical civilizations are common, or relatively common, but also short-lived, the signals that SETI researchers are seeking would have the structure not of some beacon aimed at us, but of a number of overlapping bubbles, and we could find ourselves in the inside of a bubble or halo that we cannot detect at present, since we would in be inhabiting the void at the center of such a halo. An industrial technological civilization that masters electromagnetic spectrum communications, that is to say, ordinary radio and television signals at first, followed by more sophisticated technologies later, such as microwave radar, generates an expanding globe of EM spectrum signals as long as the civilization in question is transmitting these signals. If an industrial technological civilization has been tra transmitting EM signals comes to an end, these signals will cease to be generated, and the expanding globe of EM signals will taper off to silence at the interior of this globe, which means that there will be an expanding sphere of weakening EM signals, an expanding bubble of EM radia radiation, hollow at the center, with it like a three-dimensional halo. The universe might contain these ghostly structures as a sequence of overlapping bubbles of EM radiation that describe the past structure of industrial technological civilization in the universe. While such signals would be very faint and largely lost in the background noise of the universe, we cannot discount the possibility that advanced detection technology of the future might reveal such EM structures. It is important to appreciate that our scientific knowledge advances not only as a result of new and improved scientific instruments of greater precision and sensitivity, but also due to more sophisticated methods of research and new ways of teasing out a narrative from extant data. We cannot exclude the possibility that innovative methods of scientific investigation may reveal to us faint traces of EM spectrum signatures that we cannot now detect. The ability to travel in interstellar space and to sample EM spectrum signals throughout a large volume of space would allow us to reconstruct the halos of vanished civilizations. As our technologies ex exponentially improve, I can imagine a time in the future when fleets of drones with the ability to sense very subtle EM signatures depart from our solar system in all directions in an attempt to map any halos that might exist like a ghostly remnant of civilizations long past. It has been said that astronomy is a form of time travel, and the farther we look from Earth, the farther back we see in time. This is called look-back time. Thus we can think of astronomy as a kind of luminous archaeology. Another way to think of this is that the sky reveals a kind of luminous stratigraphy with layers of light of differing ages reaching us from various parts of the cosmos. The EM halos of vanished civilizations would also admit of certain stratigraphy, since these halos would possess a definite structure. The internal structure of an EM halo would reveal essential properties of now vanished civilizations. The thickness of this three-dimensional halo in light years would correspond to the age and years of the now vanished industrial technological civilization. If precise measurements of the EM halo were possible, and its exact curvature could be determined, it would be possible to extrapolate the original source of the signal. Once the curvature of the halo has been determined, and therefore also the source, the measurement of the distance in light years from the source 
to the inner boundary of the halo will yield the number of years that have elapsed since the end of industrial technological civilization in question. The outermost stratigraphic layer of an EM halo would likely consist of the simplest kind of high-energy radio signals without any kind of subtle modulation of the signal, like Morse code transmitted by radio rather than vocal modulation. This would be followed deeper within the EM halo by analog radio modulation corresponding to spoken language. Next within the EM halo would be analog television signals and then digital television signals and data signals of the sort that would be transmitted by a radio link for an internet. This, at least, is the approximate structure of Earth's expanding EM halo, and if our civilization destroys ourself, itself or is destroyed in the near future, our EM halo would be approximately a hundred years thick, hundred light years thick. The longer we last, the thicker our EM halo. A million-year-old super-civilization, as imagined by Carl Sagan, would possess an EM halo with a million light-years radius. And if such a civilization had been extinct for a million years, there would be a hollow center of a million light-years radius, while the halo itself would extend over four million light-years diameter, a structure that is sufficiently large to easily overlap both the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies, and almost large enough to contain both galaxies within its hollow and silent center. An EM halo may drop off in the intensity of its radiation as an industrial technological civilization makes the transition from openly radiated EM signals to the pervasive use of fiber optic cables. But if that civilization begins to expand within its planetary system and possesses numerous settlements in contact with each other through EM spectrum transmissions, then the halo will reflect these developments as well. This would be further historical structure layered into the EM stratigraphy of the halo. Given that the structure of a large EM halo would consist mostly of space empty of intelligent EM signals, much of the structure of these halos would be void. It is entirely possible that Earth at present lies within the void of an EM halo or halos that both began and ceased to transmit prior to our ability to, to detect such signals, and perhaps prior to the existence of ourselves. In the event of human exploration of the cosmos, as we move outward within a possible void within a halo, it is possible that our first contact with xenogenic exocivilization will take the form of encountering the inner boundary of an EM halo, which, as we pass through it, will reveal in reverse order the history of that civilization, beginning with its destruction and ending with its emergence. If we encounter an EM halo from the outer boundary, it will reveal in chronological order the development of that civilization from its earliest and most primitive signals to its last and most sophisticated transmissions, perhaps even including hopeful SETI beacons or broadcasts. Even if exocivilizations are rare, and humanity never comes into direct contact with another civilization, the possibility remains that we may eventually formulate a science of exocivilizations that will allow us to investigate and to achieve at least a partial understanding of very distant or long-vanished civilizations. For such a science of civilization, the EM stratigraphy of halos of vanished civilizations would yield a trove of empirical data about such civilizations, even if the signals themselves defy interpretation and cannot be translated. Thank you. This has been Nick Nielsen for WOW Signal Bursts. In addition to WOW Signal Bursts, I am an occasional contributor to Centauri Dreams and to the Unseen Podcast, and I blog regularly at geopolycraticus.wordpress.com and geopolycraticus.tumblr.com. been wow signal burst number nine nick nielsen on the halos of vanished civilizations for more information go to wowsignalpodcast.com music by jason robinson wow signal bursts are distributed under the creative commons attribution share alike license Mm-hmm.
Thank you. 